How's it going everybody? Rob here at eTrailer.com. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Hopkins Multi-Tow Trailer Connector on our 2019 Chevrolet Colorado. Now our Hopkins Multi-Tow Trailer Connector is going to fit directly into the bumper and it almost looks factory because this is the same connector that is going to come from the factory. It's going to provide us with a seven-way connector as well as a four-way connector which is really nice because those are the two most common trailer connectors that you see on trailers. Now our four-way trailer connector here on the bottom is going to provide us all of our light functions like our tail lights, our turn signals, and our brake lights. Now the seven way is going to also provide those light functions but it's also going to give us a way to add a brake controller in and have that brake output signal, our reverse light signals, and a 12 volt power source. And each one of the doors is spring loaded, so we don't have to worry about remembering to close it. And it also has a gasket inside to keep all that dirt, debris, and moisture out, hopefully preventing corrosion. Now one of the things I really like about it, that's kind of overlooked, but it actually uses stainless steel on the hinge, so we don't have to worry about it rusting out over time. Now, as far as the installation goes, it's extremely straightforward. We're just going to simply remove the dummy plug that's in the bumper, and then we'll find our factory wiring right underneath the frame rail, and then we can just use the included buck connectors to connect everything up. Now, I know some customers may be worried about getting the correct wires in and making sure they're connecting it right, but we'll go through, identify each one of the wires, and make sure you feel comfortable doing it at home. In fact, let's go ahead and do the installation together. To begin our installation, we want to come underneath the back of our Colorado and move towards the driver's side. Now, I do want to mention we have our spare removed because we just got done installing the hitch, but it's not necessary to remove the spare. It just gives you a little bit more headroom and it's easier to see everything. But again, we'll come right over to the driver's side frame rail. Now, over on the side here, you'll notice that we have a lot of wiring. We're going to be looking for the wiring that just comes to blunt cut ends. It may or may not be attached using some clips. And if it is, you want to make sure you pull those down, get it out of the way. You use a flat blade screwdriver or a trim panel tool. We'll pop those clips out so you get a little bit more room to work with the wiring. Now on the end of the wires you'll see it has a little bit of heat shrink insulation on there just to help protect it. So I'm going to remove some of this tape so I can see the colors of the wires a little bit better and then we're going to cut the ends off of each one of these wires. I do want to mention that some of these wires are hot, so we don't want to have them too close together and we are going to start with one wire at a time rather than cutting them all off. Now in your kit, you're going to get a few different size buck connectors. We'll have the blue ones. Those are going to be for the thinner gauge wires like we have here. And the yellow one is going to be for the thicker gauge wire like this black one and this orange one. Now we're going to be switching these buck connectors out. And I'm going to use some heat shrink buck connectors. Since it is on the outside of the vehicle, it'll just provide a little bit better protection. So anytime you see me using this yellow heat shrink, it's just replacing the one that was in your kit. And the blue heat shrink is going to replace the blue one in the kit. So I'm going to go ahead and start with this large black wire. And again, I'm just going to kind of pull all the other wires away. I'll cut the end of it off. I'll strip back the end of it. Expose some of the copper wire. Then I'll take one of the larger buck connectors, crimp it onto the end of the wire. Now at this point, I'm just going to go through and cut off each of the ends of each individual wire and put a buck connector in place because we're going to be connecting our new harness to all of these wires. So we'll just go through one at a time, putting our buck connectors in and find the appropriate one. Now if we grab our new harness, you can see we have several wires coming out of the back. And I'd like to go over what wire is going to connect to the factory wires. So if we start, we can start with our red wire here on the new harness. The red wire is going to attach to the orange wire on our harness on the factory side. Now the blue wire on the new harness is going to attach to the blue wire that's on the factory harness. The purple wire here on the harness is going to attach to the gray wire that's on our harness on the factory side. 
Now the green wire on the new harness is going to attach to the green wire that's on the factory side. The yellow wire on the new harness will attach to the yellow wire on the factory side. The brown wire is going to attach to the brownish kind of gray brown colored wire as well. And then finally, we're gonna have this white wire with a ring terminal. Now there's a few different options of how you can connect this. This is our ground wire. So we can use the ring terminal and attach it to the frame or some solid piece of sheet metal, or we can use the large black wire because that's our factory ground inside the harness. So we can cut the ring terminal off, strip it back and attach it here. So we're gonna go through and start connecting all of our wires to the correct color wire on the factory harness. So we'll start with our red wire, strip back the end of it. And again, this is gonna go into the orange wire on the factory harness. So we'll just put it in our buck connector and crimp it in place. Now we're just going to go through and continue connecting all of the wires until we have them all connected. Now since these are heat shrink buck connectors, I'm going to use a heat gun to shrink them down. If you're using an open flame like a torch or a lighter, you want to be extremely careful not to burn or char the wires or the connectors. Now this next step isn't really necessary. I just don't want to leave these wires exposed because we have some loom here. We have some loom here, but nothing's really protecting the section where we made our connection. So I'm going to wrap all of these wires all the way up to the connector with some electrical tape, hopefully preventing any kind of moisture or debris from getting inside. And again, it's not really necessary, especially if you're using the heat shrink butt connectors, but I want to make sure that the wires are going to be as protected as they can be. Now that we have our harness attached, we want to come and bring our attention to the very back of the bumper. Now just to the left or driver's side of where the license plate is, we'll find our dummy plug and this is where the new socket is going to go. On each side we're going to have these little tabs. If we just grab it with our fingers we can kind of squeeze and then push out towards the outside of the bumper. It's a little bit of a tight fit but we should be able to work it out. Once we have it out, we can just push it like that, reach around the other side, and we'll pull out that dummy plug. And the new plug is gonna look just like it, except it actually has the connections inside. So we're just gonna come from the outside, line up, push it in place, make sure it locks in. And you wanna just give it a quick push, kinda tug on each side, make sure it's not gonna fall through. Then we'll take our new harness, and a large tab here, we want to make sure it lines up with this tab on the socket. Just plug it in, give it a quick tug, make sure we hear that click. And now we can move back to the outside and make sure all the circuits are working properly. So I went ahead and plugged in my seven pole tester. And if we look at the top needle where it says voltage, you can see that we're actually getting power back at our seven way. So we know the 12 volt circuit's working. Now I'll go ahead and run through the lights and make sure those are working as well. You can see that our clearance lights or our taillight function is working. The left turn signal, the right turn signal, and our brakes. Now that we know that all of our lights are functioning properly, we're ready to hook up to our trailer and hit the road. But again, I'm Rob here at eTrailer.com and that'll finish up your look at the Hopkins multi-tow trailer connector on our 2019 Chevrolet Colorado.